My name is Blake Wiedenheft. I'm an assistant professor at Montana State University in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology. In my lab, we're trying to understand how bacteria respond to viral infections. So like humans, bacteria get infected by viruses, and we're trying to understand what happens when a bacterial cell encounters a virus, how it responds to that infection. There are some applications for some of the things that we've been learning about uh, these immune systems. What's happened now is people realize through using structures like the one that's shown here, people really understand how these bio-machines, how the machines inside of a cell respond to that incoming viral signal. And by understanding how those biological machines work, they've now been repurposed for applications that nature didn't really intend them to. So what these machines really do is they sense that there's a viral infection and they patrol the intracellular environment of a bacterial cell and they look for invading sequences. And these are really programmable molecular scissors. You can send them to whatever DNA sequence you want. And in nature, they're programmed to target incoming viral DNA. And when they find that sequence, they cut it like molecular scissors. And when they cut it, then the virus can no longer replicate and the infection is eliminated. But the reason that that turns out to be so important in biotechnology is now that these enzymes can be repurposed for targeted genome engineering. So let's say we know the source of a, a genetic disease, cystic fibrosis. We know where the mutation is in those patients. This thing can be reprogrammed to go in and cut out, theoretically, that defect and repaired with a functional copy of the DNA and eliminate potentially all genetic diseases. I grew up in the northeast part of Montana. It's very rural. I grew up wanting to be a cowboy or a farmer and kind of thought that all the way through high school. And when I came to college, I really sampled lots of different career paths. So I worked as a fisheries biologist for a while, which my dad was a fisheries biologist and my mom was a soil scientist. And I think the real turning point for me was when I met Mark Young. Mark is a virologist. He studies the viruses that infect microorganisms that live in boiling acid environments in Yellowstone National Park. And that uh, concept really uh, piqued my, my curiosity in a way that was uncontrollable. Well, I think one of the limitations with microbiology, a lot of the stuff we do, you don't necessarily see. You know, a lot of the stuff that we do is done in test tubes uh, using small volumes that are measured precisely with pipette men. So these are kind of tools of the trade, so to speak. So what we do is use techniques that then allow us to visualize how these microscopic or really atomic or nanoparticles, how they function at a molecular level or an atomic level, we can actually see them using these graphic display programs and some structural biology techniques that allow us to magnify what's happening inside of a cell. And when we have those molecular blueprints, those atomic coordinates that explain where every atom in this machine is, now we can start to dissect it like you would any other machine, like a car, like a tractor. And if we're able to at some point understand the machine well enough that we can say, here's how it works, and now we wanna make this machine do something different by design, intelligent design based on the blueprints of this machine, then that's when we really feel pretty accomplished and feel like we have a comprehensive understanding of how the thing works is that when we can program it to do what we want. Up here on this end, you know, so 32 plus, yeah. well, okay, I mean, for plus better. two plus 12, something around a 46 mer. Yeah. In my lab, you know, the culture that I try to foster, and I think I'm pretty proud of it at, at this moment is, is that people are excited about their science. They're eager to share and hear what other people think about their results. And that's an important part of science. You need to be able to cooperate, collaborate, compromise, and uh, communicate with uh, your colleagues. And yeah, that, that is not an easy aspect of science. And, but it can be really fun when there's the right combination of people that are willing to engage in that process. I guess there's a couple of different aspects of where I hope my science could go. 
I mean, ultimately, I'm still driven by the fundamentals. I want to understand mechanistically how these things work. When we want to grow, typically bacteria, E. coli in particular, um, on the liter size scale that we use those bacteria, as I've mentioned before, we kind of domesticate these bacteria to do certain work for us. And in this case, we have them make bucket loads of protein that we can then purify on these kinds of instruments. This is called gel filtration chromatography. And all of these columns here are filled with a matrix, a gel-like matrix. And um, we push the purified proteins through this gel matrix and it works like a molecular sieve. And it separates things based on their size. And then we collect those uh, different sized macromolecules come out and go into tubes that are generally placed in this carousel. The genome engineering aspect of this research is very real and I think you know in the next couple of years I think there's a real chance that this kind of technology will be brought to the clinic and used to treat genetic diseases and to be part of something like that I think is relatively rare. So I hope that some of our research can play a role in treating some of those genetic diseases. We're in an area of science that is very transformative, it has potentially profound impacts, and we are doing experiments to, to test questions that nobody's ever asked before. And I think you want to know the answer to that, those questions. And if you don't, then, then it's the wrong field. But if you're that kind of person that wants to ask a question that nobody has ever asked before and come in on Monday morning and find out the result, work through the weekend to find out that result, then, then this is a career for you. Thank you.